Okay, so let's get started with setting up the Arduino with MATLAB. So we're going to open up the kit box. In the box is this little box, which has the kit in it, the board in it. Okay, so this has already been opened once because I opened it up earlier. And inside, you can see that there is the main board right here. And the board has a central controller that can be plugged in with USB and then a bunch of sensors and displays and things along the outside. What we're interested in is connecting over USB right here. Okay, so we need a USB cable. Now, depending on your setup, you might need a converter between USB-C and regular USB-A. Let's have a look at this. So this is regular USB-A and that's micro USB right there. So uh, if you have a USB port like this on your computer, you can use that. Uh, or if you need an adapter, you can get yourself a USB-A adapter like this. Plug that in and then you get USB-C on the other side and that can plug into your computer like that. Or you might have a hub and you might have to plug it in like this in through there. But in the kit, if you have a regular USB setup, a modern one with USB-C, you will use USB-C like this on your computer and micro USB, which is like old school cell phone on there. Okay. So let's see if we can get this plugged in. All right. So I'm going to move this out of the way because I don't need this anymore. I'm going to plug the micro USB into the Arduino board. It's just like that. So I got that plugged in. And on the other side, I've got my USB-C. And I will now plug this into top. See if I can do this. There we go. Heard a click. And this lights up here, that LED right there. And depending on the status of your board, there may be an existing program running on here that will turn on the OLED. We will be writing new programs on here and this will disappear later on. What's important is that LED right there, that green light right there. Forget about this right here. Okay, so we've got a connection and it's powered and that's fantastic. So now what we need to do is take a look to see if MATLAB recognizes this. So I type in serial list. Okay, it says that's the wrong command. So I'm going to type in serial port list, serial port list. And it says COM4. I'm now going to unplug this. Like that. And I'm going to try that again. Serial port list like that. Okay. So what this means is that uh, on the Windows computer, COM4 is what this is connected up as. So let me try that one more time. So plug in the USB-C. I'm going to go serial port list and it should say COM4 again. There we go. So we know that this is connected over Windows COM4. On a Macintosh, it will be different than that. We'll do another example of that later on. Okay, so uh, next up, if I type in Arduino like this, it might work, it might not. Nope, it doesn't work. It says Arduino requires MATLAB support package for Arduino hardware. So let's click, I can either click on this right here or um, sometimes there's a way of finding it Apps. No, I'm not. Oh, no, maybe Arduino Explorer. Anyways, I'm going to, that's changed a little bit. I'm going to type in Arduino again, like that. And I'm going to click on MATLAB support package for Arduino hardware. Let's click on that and see what happens. It loads up the add-on Explorer. 
Fantastic. And uh, that looks like it's a very popular download. I'm going to say install. Like that. And now I have to authenticate. So I'm going to put in my email address at the university. And it's going to ask for my password. Okay, so I've authenticated. And now the download begins. Okay, so I'm going to choose setup now. It's an optional next step. Let's see what happens. So it says enable installation of Arduino USB driver. Let's give that a shot. It probably won't work, but let's try anyway. Yes. Install. I very likely need a different one. I'm going to say yes to allow MATLAB to do this. We'll say yes. And hopefully it'll discover it, but it might not. We'll find out. So we know it's connected over USB. That's fantastic. Try that. Oh, there we go. Now, when it says upload Arduino server, what it means is putting special software on the chip right there. So uh, let's choose the board. We're going to choose Nano 3. Port COM 4. And that should be fine. And let's hit program. Let's see what happens. So I've chosen to program over COM 4 and as a Nano 3 type of board. Uh, I will allow access. Sometimes we get these security errors like this or security warnings. I want to allow access. So it's now transferring information over that USB cable. So we're seeing the lights flashing right there. That's a good sign. And it now appears to be programmed. It says success. So we're going to go next. Now we're going to test the connection. We're seeing the lights just flashing right there. There we go. More lights. It was successful. Excellent. It says, uh, let's see, show examples from the support package. Let's go finish. So we'll have more instructions for how to continue but I'll show you another demonstration right now. So you can go through the additional documentation right here, if you wish. I'm going to close that out. I'm going to close this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little uh, command. I'm going to say um, a is equal to Arduino, like that. And then I'm going to name my communication port. And in my case, it's COM4. And I put single quotes around that. And then I'm going to say uh, Nano3. I believe that's how we write it. That's going to be the type of Arduino board that we're going to be dealing with right here. Sometimes you can write things like Uno. But in this case, we're going to choose Nano3. And I'm going to hit Enter. We just saw the lights flash. It means it's communicating. And it is now connected over COM4 as a Nano 3 type of board. And it has multiple pins available, multiple functions available in here. And we can see that the A object right here, the Arduino object, is instantiated, which is good. It's created. Now, the next thing we want to do is uh, try to turn on an LED on D13. And then later we're going to do D4. Okay, so let's do D13. So we're going to go right digital uh, pin. Yeah. 
object A, which is the Arduino object. And we're going to say, let's see, 13, which is an LED over here. And I'm going to say 1 for on. Let's see if this works. Oh, that didn't work. So I have to put a D13. Let's try that again. D13, and I'm going to put single quotes around it, like that. Oh, and there's the LED turned on right there. All right, so next we're going to go right digital, got to spell that right, object A, D13, and we're going to turn it off like that. We're going to put a zero, and it turned off. Now let's try it for that big red LED right there. So I'm going to go right digital pin object A, and we're going to say D, let's see, it says D4 right there. So D4, D4 like that. I'm going to say one, make sure the parentheses are closed. I hit enter and that big LED right there turned on. You'll also notice that some LEDs over here turned on and off very quickly. That's because data was being transferred over the USB. And then finally, I'm going to turn off that big red LED, right? Digital pin A D4. So object Arduino A pin D4. And I'm going to make it zero like that. So turn it off. And there we go. Now, for some of you, the driver may not have installed properly um, during the installation process. So if that's the case, then what you need to do is you need to go over to the Seed Studio site for the Arduino, so the Grove Beginner Kit for Arduino Wiki page. Okay, that's the address right there. And then on here, you'll see Install the USB Driver. So you click on that, and then it's Download the CP2102 USB Driver. We click on that. And this normally doesn't need to be done, but for some of you, you may have to, depending on the state of your computer, and uh, uh, this could be for Windows or Mac OS. Go to Downloads here. We scroll down. And in this case, I believe it's uh, the CP21, uh, 210X Windows drivers right here. You click on that and you uh, click on it and then you install it based on the package that gets downloaded. Okay, so if the driver isn't recognized by your Windows or Mac OS, then you want to come in here and download it for Windows or for Mac OS, which is also available in here. There, um, let me see, there's a Mac OS right there, I believe is the one right there. Yeah, then there's some older ones in there that you don't want. So if you have trouble with the Windows drivers for the connection between your computer and here, then you need to download the Silicon Labs drivers for the CP210X chip that's also found on here. Okay, good luck everyone.